Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson, and today we are drawing Iron Man, Tony Stark, from the Marvel movies, played by Robert Downey Jr. Now we did do before, we have done Spider-Man, Tom Holland, uh, as Peter Parker in, in the films. This was a great lesson to do, and again, do check everything out. Now, there is going to be, there might even be now, a How to Draw Marvel playlist, the same way as I've done How to Draw Harry Potter, but these are all in the How to Draw Portraits playlist, as well as the How to Draw playlist as well. But this was a really good one to do because it was a three-quarter body. Again, just using the simple shapes and all the usual techniques, and it was really, really good. But if you do check out the How to Draw Portraits playlist, that has got absolutely loads because it's got uh, singers in like Billie Eilish, uh, Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, there's uh, YouTuber KSI, there's Matthew McConaughey's on there now, and loads and loads of others. So do check out that How to Draw Portraits playlist. They're on there. There is the separate Harry Potter one as well. That's fantastic for people who love Harry Potter. So those characters are separate. Now, before we go any further, please do like and subscribe. Do tick the bell to be notified when new lessons will become available. And that would be really, really lovely. Because like I say, I am hopefully trying to produce enough so that a lesson a week will be going live this year. There are now two new ways that you can support me and this channel as well to help it grow and develop. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my videos. But I do now also have Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash the art of Billy, you can subscribe and you get the video lessons like this one and all the future ones before they appear on YouTube, but they are advert free on Patreon as well. But there is also a great little feature called buy me a coffee. If you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash the art of Billy, you can just tip me the way you can tip streamers on Twitch and things like that. Anyway, that's just another great way that you can help support this channel. If you enjoy the videos, please do buy me a coffee if you want and can do uh, monthly support, then please do go to Patreon. Anyway, that's absolutely great. Hope you enjoyed doing this one and I hope that you enjoy doing Iron Man. So. If we move that out, we have the paper and it is A4 paper, which is 21 by 29.7 centimetres. That's 210 by 297 millimetres. The grid is two centimetres again. You can check here. This is the dimensions of the grid where you put down. Every grid is two centimetres across. So across the top, we've got A to J and then down the side, we've got one to 14. And that just gives us a good basis to do the drawing. Now, again, I've said in previous videos, and I'll just keep repeating it and saying, using grids is not cheating. It's a time-honored technique that's been used by artists past and present around the world. These are people who've won the National Portrait Award and all kinds of stuff around the world. So it's just a simple technique to help you do your drawing. It really is that simple. If people, you see other people online and you're seeing their drawings and paintings and you don't see them actually put the pencil line down, then they are either tracing or using a projector or they might even be using a grid, but getting the line down so you can't actually see it. That's just how it is. Whereas I want you to see. Now I put these lines on again. You'll check out the video which shows you how to put the grid down. You have to put the grid on yourself. Now I put these lines so that you can see them. If you draw them lighter, they're easier to erase afterwards. So it's just simply a technique. So again, enjoy that uh, video that shows you how to put the grids down for all of my lessons, because uh, there's different ones for different things, but this is a very, very simple technique to help you. But we are going to start the lesson in a minute and I will be using the trusty 2B pencil. And so that's good. I've got a shorter one. Like I say, they're just different ones and this one's in a holder. Uh, I will be using a 4B and possibly an 8B on this because there's a lot of dark. Whereas on Spider-Man and 
Matthew McConaughey, I just used a 2B pencil, so it shows you can do things with a very, very simple amount of equipment. Uh, and also, I just want to, this is why I do these lessons, it's to help you and encourage you. And I want to demystify drawing. Now, again, I use simple shapes. If you want to do freehand drawing, check out How to Draw Anything Part 1. Link in the cards and in the description. It's a very short video. It shows you laying things down using basic shapes. Now, I do that even using the grid. The grids help as reference points so that we can actually place the drawing down on our page so we don't run out. Somebody did leave a comment the other day, and again, it, it happens. They just ran out of paper. They, they didn't place it correctly before they started the drawing so for some reason it was off and so the drawing ended up running out off the page i made that mistake many times as a young developing artist but this helps you actually place everything down you've got to think about where it's going to go on the page also if you use the hashtag drawing with billy then you can tag me on Instagram again all the social media is in the description but also in this banner people tag me on Instagram mainly and there is Twitter and Facebook and people contact me and you can send me your drawings from the lessons that I've done and they will end up in slideshows as you'll see in these three that appear uh, and I know that I've had enough up to about five and I'm gathering the photos now of, of people's work that they've done so number six will be done and it's just great to see people enjoying doing the lessons so now we will crack into the lesson and we will crack on with the trusty 2B pencil. We'll demystify drawing and you'll see this develop as we go along. So here we have the trusty 2B pencil and we're going to start and we're going to start at the top of Iron Man's hair. Now again we've got this huge shape we're going to use the grid to help put the shapes in so we're starting from f1 you can see the top of his hair and this is going to come down and around and we just you can kind of just put the line in we can see here we've got the c you just got this like kind of curved triangle shape here and that helps and then from f3 we've got a horizontal line coming underneath the horizontal number three line Got another little triangle and that's the top of his forehead you can see coming over to the sea line and that's how we can then put a box up there and that's the top of that part of his hair up at the front so now i'm going to draw another box and that's for the hair on the side and now from h2 we're going to come down to number five and that's the hair on the side we've got another little box there now right next to i between five and seven it goes just below the seven line we're drawing an oval shape now you could draw a box and that's where iron man's left ear is and we've got this fantastic bright block of light this is going to come up over the G so between G5 and then it comes down past H8 we've just got a block and that's going to be that bright bright light that long rectangle there again we've got that shape of the ear and that's going to be that circle inside that Again, we're just using shapes then below the ear between seven and eight on the eye we've got a triangle this is like the kind of top of his metal collar of his iron man suit so we've got a nice simple triangle there and then the shoulder goes off now coming down to just inside the G above the 12 line we've got a line that comes down and so we've got this kind of rectangle shape which is the Iron Man suit and then we just want the C curve 
that comes all the way down to the 13 line and that's the shape of his kind of left shoulder part again rectangle little kind of rectangle inside and follow the c curve going up there now to come back up we've got his eyebrow on f5 so we've got a rectangle that comes across to e and that's that eyebrow then inside the e above the six you can see we've got a little triangle that's that shadow but we can bring that line down come down to eight and come over and it comes past the F line and then that goes up and we've got another triangle there that's that shadow and going up inside the eye we've got another little triangle there and that's the shadow and then we've got that rectangle and this is the eye going over now right next to the F6 line just drawing a little circle shape and then we want a leaf we can see how this leaf comes around and the court you've got a V there and that's Iron Man's eye shape so you've got this nice kind of oval but it's a leaf imagine the points at the end then we've got this lovely rectangle dark shadow underneath the eye and here you can see we've got a triangle of light for the cheek it comes down over there where the, from where the shadow is there now here you can see we've got a V there at the top but this is a kind of diamond shape and then this comes down through the G9 you got the bottom point And that's that shape on the side of his cheek and this is how we can just use nice simple shapes it's a little rectangle for that crease then coming across from D to C we've got a rectangle for his right eyebrow and so you've got the left eyebrow comes across and it kind of looks that the right eyebrow is at a different angle it's just kind of pointing up a little bit then coming across from the C over the six just a little rectangle that's the edge of the eyebrow now from the D between six and seven we've got his right eye now I'm drawing the rectangle first now we've got a V there that's his tear duct inside and right on the D line we've got a circle that comes into about a third of his iris and pupil now we want C shape a little pointed C shape and that's the shape of the back end of the eye and then I'm putting a little shape in that's the highlight then we've got his pupil again right on the F line we want the same highlight on this side and then his pupil now front of the nose that comes right the way down to the 8 got a little V at the bottom but that's just a rectangle for the top and then a little c-shaped triangle on the edge that's the side of his nose now again coming off there we've got another triangle which is the top of above his moustache going up to his nose and then on this side coming over towards the G below the 8 we've got another triangle that comes out again we can just put another little rectangle underneath that's how the shadow comes off the bottom of the nose 
now if we come up back up to the hair between B and C this comes down all the way to the 6 on the B and we've got a triangle there at the bottom so you can see there we've got a triangle shape and then just put a little rectangle in and that's the hair on the top now coming down to C7 we've got a rectangle of hair from just inside the B5 and that's the hair coming down the side of his forehead on the right hand side of his head and the cheek just kind of comes out and we come down through the halfway point on the nine again you can kind of do a bit of a dot to dot and then we want to bring the triangle over so we're on F11 so that's here this is the bottom of his jaw it's just above and then that line goes out to the side of his cheek and then that's going to go up where his face is now again in the dark shadow we can bring the jawline up in between this diamond that we drew you can see how it goes all the way up to between H and I on the 8 it goes above and that's where that light is so even there below the ear we've got a dark little square now his mouth we're going to draw the diagonal line that comes starts between the F and the G above the 9 about there and it's going to come across it touches on the 9 between E and F then comes out and ends just inside half halfway to the left of the E line it's not perfectly straight so it's just a little bit of a curve and that comes over now above we can then make that into a triangle and then we can do another triangle for the right hand side of the upper lip and then we've got a nice curve kind of leaf shape for the lower lip that curves around then coming down below the nine line to the right of the D we've got a little rectangle that's the edge of his moustache the same up on the right hand side we've got a little rectangle there's a kind of goatee bit that comes down off his moustache and then you can see we've got a darker triangle in the center of his moustache and we can just connect those lines up a bit of a rectangle slightly curved rectangle and that's the moustache going over the top of his lip so again come out got the rectangle and then just do another little rectangle for that angle going down then underneath the chin the bottom lip on his front of his chin you got the kind of goatee part that's a little rectangle and then we've got the actual goatee at the bottom now to the right of the F got a little triangle up and then that goes up there and we've got the shape here now again there's a shade part I'm just putting a little rectangle in because you can see that dark shade and we've got a U shape Like a, that's like a little mountain range there and that's the bottom of his goatee and then that's the edge of the goatee going up his jaw now we can indicate where that shadow is just making that shape up there now that's where the shade is now I'm putting a little kind of D shape right in the dark 
you can see like a crescent moon that the outer part of the D that's his nose where it joins the side of his cheek in the shadows so that'll help when we come to put the outline down and then we need to then put the shading down on top this will help so that you can actually see Iron Man now We want to bring the curve down of the collar. We've got this U shape and just nice, simple shapes now. So this is the top of the chest piece on his Iron Man costume. That's like an inverted V. See how that comes across. Now that then comes down through the 13 line between H and I. Then we've got a rectangle off the side of the plate. This is kind of like armor plated chest then you've got the front and that goes off it's like a big kind of cog and that goes right to the edge and then that comes down to the bottom now we've got i'm just indicating some wiggly lines that's where the, the shadow is now we've got a kind of parallelogram rectangle that comes down from just left of the f below the 12 to the bottom here and we can see how that curves across and then comes down just to the right of the D line right at the bottom and we just got a little curve again rectangle here and that's the edge that comes down and then we want a curve We've got a little triangle there. And that very quickly is just getting our kind of cubist shape form down of Iron Man, Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. Next, we can start getting the outline down before we start doing the shading. Now, I bought this piece of paper on so as I don't smudge, just sharpen the pencil as well. Now we're going to start doing the detailed outline and we're going to start right on with Tony's eye so you can see we've got this curve into the dark now remember we're going to get just the outline down again I'm drawing this really dark so that you can see And we curve over we follow the inside we've got to come down to the about the halfway point and then it comes underneath to the tear duct and we got right in that dark and then his lower eyelid see that curves around up and comes up we've got this light part right underneath and we've got the shadow following underneath we can bring that curve around this is the crease of the lower eyelid that comes up to where the tear duct is just indicate the tear duct now right through the f6 cross point we've got his iris and the eye curves and it comes around he's quite wide-eyed and looking out and we've got the iris on the right hand side now I'm just going to come in so that you can see this the highlight is right on the line so I've just removed where the grid line was and I've put that shape in, that kind of rectangle shape for the highlight, indicating the pupil, and that's the dark and the shadow. Now we have the crease above, and this goes right down into the shadow.
and it kind of comes over a little bit flat it's not a perfect curve so it kind of comes over and then starts its tra trajectory down at the upper eyelid crease into the shadow and then we've got a shadow line underneath which is the bottom part of his eyebrow going into the corner of his eye socket so we've got a nice dark shadow then the edge of the eyebrow starts on the side there we've got this dark shadow point for the nose that comes down goes through the six line kinks across and starts its way down for the nose on the inside of the E so that comes down through the seven and then cuts across for the nose now we've got I'm indicating the very lower part of the kind of eye bag of the eye socket and that comes all the way up there now we've got this triangle of shadow coming from the eye socket now above the eye we've got that little highlight of shadow so we can bring that over and then we've got the eyebrow curving over in the shadow area right the way across and then we've got this sharp line of this highlight starting just to the right of the G line and it's a bit kind of crookly and wavy following the contours of his face we've got a fantastic strong highlight again I'm just I'm not doing a solid line I'm just bitting it because that's the kind of effect that it has and that comes all the way down on that side point now come back up and finish the eyebrow off comes over the F kind of just flat underneath and then comes over and joins by the E line and then we have again that dark patch inside the eye yeah that's about halfway that's halfway where that joins then coming off we've got the shadow coming down the cheek off the tear duct that comes down comes through the seven line and I'm just using the soft end of the pencil I'm not using the sharp point that comes through the F it's going to be kind of blurred and then cuts back across comes over through the eight line you can see it then curves across to the E up to the bottom part of the nose then we've got the bottom part of the nose the nostril in the shadow just curve that up a little bit and then we've got the dark of the edge of the nose a little kind of crescent shape a little banana shape it's going to be a little kind of highlight inside and we want the soft kind of shadow line just bends we've got a D shape there and then curves down by the E line to join the shadow underneath now we come up and we've got a crease line that crease line goes up through the five line then we've got his left eyebrow so it just comes underneath the six 
just right underneath and then it comes across and it's a bit lower little slight kind of diagonal I'm just indicating just some little lines and that's going to be the hair and that curves just through the C line and above we've got the upper eyelid and that comes down and then cuts across between the C6 corner point and goes to the edge now right underneath we've got his left eye right on the D line we've got the crease above so that comes over you can see how it's kind of in line with where the edge of his eyebrow is then we want the upper part of the eyelid crease fold of skin coming across and it comes down to about a quarter okay, imagine a little box there on that point that's where it's going to come down to now inside that we've got the curve of the upper eyelid with the eyelash that curves over kind of reaches its zenith its top point there and then cuts across on this diagonal going down to the tear duct but it comes through and then just a little shape out little V and that's the tear duct of his right eye then you can see how that comes over towards the D line and then we get this curve down for the lower eyelid the inner part of the lower eyelid and that comes up and joins the upper eyelid there so we can put that dark line in and you know that's going to be the dark point then we've got the outer part of the lower eyelid with the eyelash that curves around joins up and we've got a little rectangle for that highlight and the line of the bag of the lower eyelid comes around underneath and then the deeper line underneath that nice kind of crescent shape there just draw those on lightly now the iris come back goes up between the upper fold and the lower eyelid the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid and then we want to see shape here coming down and touching and we've got that strong highlight again I'm just putting the shape so as we can leave it and pull that out more using the putty eraser later indicate the pupil so there already you can see we're getting a really good nice outline down so just sharpen the pencil a bit now we've got the nose little bit of shadow following the line from the corner of the eye socket and then you can see the nose it's vertical here on about the center so we've got a vertical line coming down comes below the seven and then just starts the C shape coming round to the E8 point underneath where you've got the shadow point down here and we've got a little triangle pointing up for that shadow at the bottom then we come down that needs to go out a little bit more I'm just removing that line so we've got the center line here this is the line coming the nose coming straight down and the kind of bulbous bit on the end has got to just come out a little bit more because we've got the highlight of the nostril that's just a little bit further left as well and then it comes down and curves underneath the eight line and that then we've got that little oval shape that just peeks through the eight line and that's the lower right nostril 
we've got that strong highlight then that's going up the side of the nose. Now, coming down here, we've got this crease line from his nose down to the mouth. But that's looking rather lovely. So now we come up and we're going to do from the F3 point, we've got his hairline. So we're going to come across, and we've got this little diagonal, comes across to about halfway on the C line. We've got this curve. So I'm using the side of the pencil, not a real sharp line, because this is going to be the hair. I'm just waving the line a little bit just to indicate the way that the hair is going to go. It's going to go up and you can see how it's brushed that way. And then we come down to the four, got a little triangle. Then between the four and five, curves across. And remember, you draw hair in the way that you brush it. Got the hair coming down the side of the forehead. That comes all the way down to the seven. Just goes through. Side of the face kinks out a little bit. Starts to come down, crosses over the C line, going towards the eight, just on that side. Now, this line coming back up, we can then see we've got the hair that goes up, curves across, and then just curves back above the eyebrow line on the six. Then got the outer part of the hair, the lines come down, the curve of the hair, this goes up towards the D, we've got a little kind of triangle point and the line comes across, you've got a kind of U shape here that goes up between the E and the F, touches in between. And then his hair starts to come over from the F. We've got that rectangle that we put in. Comes over to the G line. We've got a little kind of U shape of gap there. And then it curves over to the two. And then it kicks out, goes past the H. Then we come down through the three And we follow the trajectory down towards the four. It just kicks back in above the top. And then we get this diagonal line just to the right of the center. That's the hair out at the back. Then we've got this strong highlight. It comes up and the shadow comes up onto the G line just above the five. And it comes over to about two thirds. And then we've got his hair, like his sideburn hair start by his ear. It comes down right to the H6 point. And that's that shape that goes up. Then we can just indicate going up diagonally, that shape of that highlight. Now, again, inside we've got this very strong highlight line that tracks all the way over. So I'm going to start from the E. We've got the darker lines coming over. Then we come over to the D. And that line goes up and then on the side coming so from B3 you can see how those lines come out. We follow in the direction that the hair is brushed. So on F2 now, you can see here we've got a little V. There's a V there of the hair. And this is how you look and you've got a C shape there. And that's how we can indicate the actual direction of the hair as it grows. Now we come over between F and G and we've got the hair that comes down to join down here where the shadow part is.
that's looking rather lovely now bring the paper over so as I don't smudge the center part we're going to come and do the ear now the ear falls within H and I between five and it just goes below seven and we drew that rectangle shape but it's just the rectangle shape helps us then to put in the curves and we can use the grid lines as well as really good reference points so we're starting where the rectangle is about a third of the way in we can curve up comes up and touches the five line then it curves out and touches the eye line just below the halfway point then it just follows just draw the line down to about a quarter above and then it starts to curve below the seven curves underneath just past the halfway point again we've got this triangle from this construction line that we did earlier and you can see how this shade line is inside the ear top here so we've got that point that comes down imagine a c shape there a little c shape and then it kicks over just a little bit inside You've got the side of the cheek that comes down, goes through the seven, and then goes out to join the ear lobe at the bottom. Now, I'm just going to sharpen my pencil, just so I've got a nice sharp point and it's not too blunt. Now, here below the six, we've got this nice D shape. And that kind of comes to the halfway point just bring that line over a bit a little bit more and that's the kind of highlight of the crease of skin on the way into his earlobe maybe unless he's wearing some kind of earpiece then we follow the line inside and this is the strong highlight we can just follow it all the way round that's going to be our strong highlight of the outer earlobe Then little highlight there, little one there, and then kind of little tooth triangle highlight there. Now we come off the neck. This is kind of right on the center point. Yeah, it's about, a th need to just bring that down. Yeah, it's about a third. So the ear needs to come down that little bit more. Then on the center line, got a little line that comes down and goes over to the shadow line that we put in and this curves across goes through the H nine point and we're just following the shadow all the way down for his beard now his chin curves through the F line above the 11 anyway, we bring the curve over for the bottom of the chin and then it starts its trajectory up for the cheek on the side and we can then bring this line down from the side so we're on the nine line between C and D and the cheek comes down curves across comes through the 10 comes down to join the bottom of the cheek and then we've got hair on the outside which is his goatee and then we've got this strong highlight that goes up the side of his cheek we can go up through the eight which is level with the nose then we've got a little kind of V shape that goes up to the C line comes up we've got little rectangle of light next to the eye and that goes up through the six and that's the highlight at the top now come over on the left cheek we want the crease that comes down that's coming through the halfway point that's got to go up to the nose and curves over 
getting close towards the G line. And we've got the moustache, the shape of the moustache. So we want this little curve just to the right of the E. This is the top. And then we follow the shape down of the moustache over to the corner point. That darker part underneath. Then we want the top comes over. And it's about on the third. Comes through the nine. And then we've got the edge of the goatee. I hope you're having fun with this. This is fantastic. Again, it's rather complex, but it's just all good fun. Now the goatee comes up, curves towards the nine. Got a little. A little dimple as it creases in the centre of his mouth, but it's fairly level. That comes over. And then again, I'm doing kind of just rough lines because it's the bottom of a moustache. This needs to come over. And we're just following the lines that we drew. That's the edge of the upper moustache. Now we've got his upper lip. So this starts, we're starting on the E line, we've got the top of this curve. So this curves down, comes over to where it joins the mouth, uh, the, the corner of the mouth joins the moustache. Little triangle of shadow there. Then we can bring the curve for the centre. This kind of goes up to that halfway point. And then the lip, upper lip, carries its journey over to the left corner, which is about halfway on this side. Now, we want the curve in the centre. It just curves, the, the centre line curves up and comes through the nine line in the centre. Curves up a little bit as it goes through the E line and then goes down again to the corner of the mouth. Now, the lower lip, we've got the bottom part above, got a little kind of wiggle, and a little dink in the centre point, and that curves up and goes right through the F9 point. And then the edge goes out. So now we've got the shape goes through the F line. the bottom part of his goatee then we can just follow the construction lines as the goatee goes up then we've got this deeper shadow within this triangle so we've got the shadow that comes down from the G line crosses over crosses through G7 comes down a little bit like a, a little S shape there and comes down the front of the cheek down to the side of the mouth and there's a little highlight inside there that we can just indicate then we've got this stronger highlight in the G and H box between 8 and 9 and that goes through the 8 line comes down and comes over. Now we've got the curve of the lower part well, uh, of his cheek or the at the front of his like kind of chin connector where the helmet would join on. And that comes up into this dark shadow. But that's looking quite good so far. We've got to finish the rest off and then rub out the lines. But it's looking pretty good. Now, just sharpen the pencil a little bit. And we can come back in and get the rest of Iron Man drawn down. So coming off the ear, come down to the top of the collar, 
and I've got this strong dark shadow that's coming between seven and eight just to the inside of I. This curves across and comes down and we got this fantastic triangle here. So again we can just bring the line over and then from just underneath J8 we can bring that shoulder line over it comes through and goes through the nine line between H and I just to the right of the halfway point and that goes over into that shadow now we've got the shoulder section we've got the construction line in and we just follow that down coming down through the nine it's got to be that's got to come over to halfway and there's a kind of funny shape in there then we've got this kind of shadow blob and then this highlight to the right of the J line going off to that shadow that curves off and up now we come down to the 12 below the 12 and the 13 and it just curves out and then comes around in a kind of U shape and then starts its way back up on about a third so we've got a nice curve that follows and again we just put that construction line in and that helps then from the 10 line we've got a straight line down it comes to just inside the J and that's that dark shadow stripe that's in there and then some highlights we've got some kind of shadow shapes that are just in there and here we've got a little line now again we've got the shape of the front chest piece we can just build that up these nice rectangle shapes this curves across you can see these lines went in really well and then we can curve over but that line needs to go over a little bit that goes over to there then there's another rectangle that comes out comes over to join this got a triangle that shadow that goes down now here we've got this crease shape triangle the kind of fold in the suit that line comes down now the top of the chest piece comes down and across and curves to the right of the F below the 12 and goes through the F line so we can just bring that curve over comes to the line that joins goes down to the entrance to his big glowy bit in the center his neutron reactor again we've got these fantastic shapes of the shadow just indicating those rather quickly just wiggly lines now the collar we come out to the right of the E line on the 11 and we've got two lines that follow that first line round and up you can see I'm using the curve of my wrist to help on that main part again I had to move my wrist around because I can't move the paper you can move the paper and you can just use the curve whichever way you'd like to now <clears throat> the edge comes down comes across Then we've got this triangle of shadow there with a little rectangle inside highlight right on the top 
done. <clears throat> got the curve that comes down, we've got this little rectangle and the edge of the suit. <clears throat> and that is Iron Man's outline down. That's been really good. Again, it seems very complex, but this is the important bit. Again, I'm just indicating that shadow up at the top. He's got a couple of scar marks there. Again, that's just, we can just wiggle about with this as much as we want, but that is the good basic outline down of Iron Man. Now we need to erase all of the, the grid line and the construction line and then we can actually start shading in. So I've got my Mars Plastic eraser, it's just one that I use, you might find a, an eraser that works for you, it's personal choice. So oh, let's not, again I've, I'm using this paper to hold the sheet down. And you use the paper so that you don't get the grease of your hand. You don't smudge what you've already put down, but then you don't get the grease of your hand on the paper and your fingertips, because that can then, when you start shading in, the grease off your finger can pick up the graphite and smudge and stain, and you can't then rub it out. It kind of goes darker. You know, I'm rubbing really tough because I put these lines on dark enough so you can see them <coughs> but you don't have to do that so now working on the left hand side coming down all this big area and this is the thing with this particular eraser you can then rub out large areas like this very quickly but <clears throat> when it comes to these kind of detail areas so here within the forehead and the top of the nose those big gaps there this is okay but it will obliterate your drawing so you do need different size erases or chop it down, you know, cut it into finer points. So that's pretty much the bulk that I can do. I now have a Mars Plastique in a pen that is a little bit more directional and controllable. Just cleaning it on my jeans. And this allows me to get into these areas where there's other detail lines that I don't want to lose too much. Now you still will knock out some lines, but you definitely want to remove as much as you can from the highlight areas. But that one there in the dark, in the shadow, <clears throat> and this one at the bottom of the ear, they would get drawn over. <clears throat> when we fill the shading in. Now, coming up the cheek, underneath the eye, again, the eyeball is so large I can get that inside, inside the eyebrow, above the eyebrow. So, Down by the nose. On the cheek. Down on his chin, across the lips. This is, like I say, the, these shapes are quite good. 
underneath the nose in that shadow area. This is working really well because the shapes are large enough for the end of the eraser to go in and remove what I need. Whereas you can end up, so I'll just throw my pencil on the floor, you can end up needing to use a finer eraser for some areas and that's why you have a variety of tools. That's why you use different grades of pencil. Now this one we will be definitely be using a 4B and probably an 8B for the darks. And that's something that using different grades of pencil and there's like 2H. I've got a video up about the pencils that I use. I think it's called the materials that I use or something. It might even be in the description. But it helps having the different grades of pencil. The same way as it helps having the different... You know, just removing that grid line. I've got it going up his forehead there. And then we're in there. Different size erasers allow you to do different things which is why I also use the putty eraser because you can knead it into a fine point just helps with being able to do different techniques because it's just learning techniques because you're creating an illusion now I've got a lot of spent eraser there now so I use this old brush just a soft brush this is like an old watercolor brush I think from a long time ago I think it's like, this is this is definitely 25 30 years old and then I used it to varnish pictures whereas now I get varnish in a can spray varnish that's lovely uh, it just means you can brush off rather than using your hand and I sweep it onto the piece of paper that I've used whereas I used to sweep it on the floor whereas that just means it's tidier so now I can come back in and this is an electric eraser I've got new batteries in there as well and this just means I can get those real little points out now you can get like these little erasers and you can just use them there in between the eye and you can use them just as a manual eraser and I could tell I was using this on Spider-Man and it was stopping because the batteries hadn't got enough power in them so that's really good so again I'm now just going to sweep that off see if there's something that needs to be done again there's some little bits and now we have our outline down just got my pencil off the floor of Robert Downey Jr as Iron Man Tony Stark anyway I hope you've enjoyed getting that outline down now we can start getting the shading down next back with the trusty 2B pencil <clears throat> now it's in a uh, extender so you get more life out of it so that'll help and we're going to start the shading in of Iron Man <clears throat> so <clears throat> what I do at first just so as you end up with a good tone all over is I just fill in a large area now again I've got the piece of paper because the side to the side of this paper now because I've done three drawings of the Matthew McConaughey Spider-Man and now uh, we're doing Iron Man then to the side down here 
there is a lot of dirt and you can just kind of see here on the side that uh, as you do work even with using the paper the underneath of the paper as you're going across a drawing then puts that down on wherever you rest it in your hand so like my hand is now pivoting I'm pivoting from my elbow lightly resting my hand on the paper but it's going backwards and forwards I'm not pivoting from the wrist and so that effect will essentially like a brass rubbing push down the graphite underneath now here we've got the highlight so I'm not going to go over that bit there highlight inside that eye there we can go over the eyebrows strong highlights down the side and a strong highlight here now again this is going to be darker in this section but when you're filling in like this I'm not twisting the pencil around so now I've got a nice flat part of the pencil you can actually fill in the shapes so you can see here I'm filling in the triangle down the nose now I am pressing on a little bit harder than I will do on the flesh just because that is the shadow so now I'm very light again just filling in down Iron Man's nose and the strongest highlight is on this edge down here so again filling in the cheek this kind of triangle area on his cheek very light in the eyeball again on the right eye coming down the cheek fill in on the eyeball got a strong highlight on that lower eyelid <laughs> bag and then we come across the cheek to the strong highlight on the right of his face and we can come all the way down again there's a stronger highlight up here but we can pull that out with the putty rubber that'll be okay we've left the one right on the edge of the cheek so just going over and filling all of that area in because we don't want to leave the, the, the plain paper is going to be left for the strongest highlights so now we're just filling over the lips the moustache a little bit again that slightly darker tone and the ear and that's going to be very very dark on the hair now again I'm using the pencil I'm going in the direction that the hair is brushed but for the shaded area here we've got this lovely shape that's just a nice block of shadow so we can fill that in really quickly but then for all the hair we've got a highlight over the front just it was kind of in the dark but just coming down underneath so I'm just using the pencil again these are very simple mid-tones and I'm just indicating in the direction that the hair grows and it just works when you put the more detailed lines on that'll help you with the hair looking real so 
So we've now got this dark part down the right hand side of his hair. down the side of his face and already you can see we're just starting to see now <clears throat> Iron Man start to develop in front of us we're just getting that first simple layer of tone down nice and quickly and it's giving us some nice form and shape So, shadow on the side of his cheek in this diamond section now that we drew earlier, leaving that highlighted bit. Again, I'm just increasing slightly the tone. You can see already now we've got really good form and definition. Again, just on the moustache, just filling that in with the flat of the pencil. The upper lip has got a shadow. And we've got the stubble underneath his lower lip. A dark patch coming underneath the goatee and we can just fill the goatee in just lightly and that's looking really good so now I'm going to use the flat of the pencil the tip I'm carefully going to fill in his pupil around that highlight the iris fill in the tone a little bit nice and gently just using the tip and we've got the dark on the side that bit going up to the eyebrow I'm just putting a little bit more cross hatching on just to help with that definition a little bit And already you can see our Tony <coughs> starting to come off the page. Fill in his eyebrow. Now we're going to do the same on this side. Just using the tip, just twisted it round so it's a bit sharper. Get a, just a nice darker patch in the pupil of his right eye. And we come up the top of the iris underneath the upper eyelid come down around that highlight and then we can just fill the iris in a little bit leaving the highlight nice and bright and clear and we've got the shadow caused by the fold So even that already, we've got a really good looking image of Tony coming together. And laying the foundation down using those shapes and the lines is the most critical, crucial part. So now up on the side of his cheek, inside this highlight, we've got a little bit of tone that comes down there, a little bit that comes down there. And then we need to fill in again using the flat the areas on his suit so we've got this triangle here that's a bit darker I'm not going to straight away to put down the darker tones because if you get if you put too much dark in you can do that 
and you can you can literally start from the eye and, and work your way out that's absolutely fine doing the detail straight away but when you get the paper covered you start to see the tone building up and it just helps and this is it in a sense the way that a portrait painter would work in color they would put shapes down underneath and build the full tones up and then they do the detail on the top afterwards so there we've got that shadow right underneath the neck collar we've got a darker shadow again I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand to pivot and fill that area in again dark there real dark in that little triangle a bit darker going to the edge where we've got the crisp highlight right on the edge so now filling this around on the neck then coming up into this triangle we've got light at the top but a bit of a shape of tone there the upper shoulder piece coming up from the chest we need to bring that tone over to this dark section again just using the flat of the pencil filling it in kind of nice and quickly then right down here we've got a nice dark patch again there's a little rectangle of light here so I'm just put that in we can build the detail up on that that'll have a bit of tone in then we can fill this darker area in and that now we've got the dark right on the edge again on this bit I've, I've just carefully gone to the edge but you will kind of go over if you're doing detail right to the edge then get a clean sheet of paper and slip it underneath and then you can draw it and it doesn't matter you won't get it on the off the side of your paper so you can do that and that way you'll keep you can go right to the edge keeping it clean and that's just a little simple technique now on this shoulder part again I'm now just going to <coughs> kind of rub that off the edge because <sighs> I'm not going to go right to the edge but that's what you can do if you want to I might do might go back but we'll wait and see actually might it might go well to be actually black all the way to the edge we'll wait and see but that's what you can do if you want to and again you get strange and interesting effects by doing that so now we've got the dark coming down we've got a real dark band in that long rectangle now here we've got little peaks of highlights on the actual army now I might use some kind of paint or correction fluid for those highlights we'll wait and see a bit later might not but I might actually got I mean, I've not had a go but I've got some correction fluid in a pen uh, might be just good to experiment with it live experimentation I've not used it before that could be something to do for those highlights but again I try and do these lessons with absolute as basic materials as I can just to help you guys to see what you can do with just a pencil and, and erasers and a bit of kitchen towel and a blending stump things like that so 
we're now at the bottom part and just filling this tone in again nice and quick coming over And got the blue on that part. Just some bits, some little bits, and then a little bit in the entrance to his little power plant hole in his chest. And I'm just coming back up. Increasing the tone a little bit on the face. Even that, I hope you're enjoying this already because that looks great. We're going to have Tony Stark, Iron Man, looking really good. So that's a basic amount of tone down <laughs> straight off. Now I'm going to come in with a piece of kitchen towel, fold it to a clean part and then I'm going to be very careful and we're just going to smooth I'm going to go over the lighter areas and this is something that I do I mean there you can see a little mark that looks like a kind of grease mark that maybe has picked up the pencil but it's okay we can work with that but we can push the pencil tone around using this kitchen towel and I like doing this because it kind of flattens and levels everything out a little bit you could just keep building up cross hatching uh, but this is just a technique that I like doing so now tone in that highlight I'm just dabbing little bits because it's not quite solid highlight but we didn't put any pencil in there at first so now down over but this then gives us a kind of base tone it's like an underpainting tone that we can then build upon as we develop the drawing underneath the eye I've got this tone coming off on the left eye I'm just brushing it gently using the finger and again each drawing is different there's no kind of formula that you can follow exactly other than you've got to get the outline down then you can start building tone up And so you can do different things around the drawing to build up your tones and develop different areas at different times. Again, that again has just dramatically changed how Tony's looking. So again, we've got here now. kind of darker area on the battered part of his chest just indicating that darker tone and this is looking rather nice again just come in smooth that around And that's looking good now again as I say you don't have to do things the same way all the time now I'm going to come in with my putty rubber and I'm going to pull out 
these stronger highlights straight away. Side of his nose. Now, whatever. Just pull off that. Fortunately, I didn't think it was too much of a grease. I think it was just a smudge mark. I was able to pull off that little bit that was on there. Now we come all the way down the cheek. Now I'm dappling up the cheek. In between his nose on his forehead. Again, this just helps. bring about some image. Now, we just pull out these highlights. These are the strongest parts on the drawing. And we want them to stay later so that's why I'm just cleaning them up now as I say it's not a question of having a formula that you follow all the time there's the highlights on the battered part so again down here these little kind of dings and that how we can develop drawings differently and you, you, you treat each one as a different entity one on the end of his nose now I'm going to come in and I've really pulled those highlights up highlight in the ear coming up over the hair. Now, I'm just going to, again, very quickly, oh, didn't mean to do that. So, a bit of kitchen roll. I can smooth that, and like I say, I just, that will get covered up because there is hair that comes across. But you can see how just simply using the putty eraser we've now got really good light and definition all over Tony we can just build up the detail little by little but this is how it's not a formula for one way or that shapes everything so again I'm now going to I'm just seeing there's got lots of dirt and I did this at the end on Spider-Man I've just cleaned up that bit right by his neck Just so we haven't got a lot of smudge coming over. And you see that's really working well. And then we'll build up the tone in the next section. Now, I'm going to sharpen a 2B pencil. But we are going to be using a 4B in a moment as we start doing more detail on our Tony. So I'm going to come in and we're going to use the 2B pencil at first and we're going to do we're going to start detailing up Tony's eyes. Again I've said this in the other videos it kind of you can literally start in this corner and work your way you can work your way over you can start with the ear you can start wherever you want you can start with the mouth the nose but when I've done drawings, I always tend to start with the eyes because it gives you, pun intended, a focal point. You've actually locked on then to the drawing. It's just nice to get a certain, you know, little part done. So, using the sharpened tip 
and we come over we need to just bring the shadow down this is the thickness of his eyelashes and that curves over and then comes down to the tear duct and I'm using the 2B because it's just soft enough to give me the edge that I require now we're doing the fold above the eye it gives it like I say the edge it gives me the ability to do sharp lines but also soft edges so we're now bringing that fold down all the way and the point stays sharp that a little bit longer so I can do some detailed dark bits carefully and that will stay when we start applying the softer 4B pencil so now we just curve that up to the the lower eyelid got that nice curve coming round to his tear duct now I'm just I'm going to come in quickly just touch with the putty rubber just so as I've got that highlight on the upper eyelid coming round to the shadow and then I'm using the tip and I can just flicking and that gives us the little eyelashes and again underneath we've got a softer not an absolutely jet black dark line but we've got a shadow line coming round coming up to the tear duct and then that curves in and this is the underneath part of his eye lower eyelash rim of his eyelid and again same thing can just put some little flicks in and that gives us those little eyelashes now right in the corner of the tear duct we've got that dark line we've got the highlight that comes under Again, underneath we've got this little line of the lower crease of his eye. Now I'm just indicating where everything the highlight around here and again I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil we've got this highlight that comes over in the corner of his eye socket it's a darker highlight so I can just darken that down with the 2B pencil to the light a bit over the top and then we've got the dark caused over the iris shadow from the eyelid and going right to the corner and then the eyeball is very dark now we've got the iris it's got kind of a couple of dark lines coming down but this bit here is just highlighted so just be careful don't press on too hard 
marking the pupil and then around that highlight I'm really pressing on with the sharp part just to give me that good dark definition and then again the iris on the outside now we need to build up this dock so I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil and this will mean you know, I'm using the, the kind of t side at the tip I can actually put in this dock very quickly coming down the corner of the eye it's a little bit of highlight showing but it's dark here we've got that dark shadow coming down the bottom and we come up we've got this dark shadow on the upper part of his like high eyelid in the eye socket eye eyelash coming over now I'm going to fill in all around here with this lovely dark tone just nice and quickly need to bring the bottom of his eyelash that socket of the upper eye socket bring that over and then the shadow comes down over the eye and you can see we've got that horizontal line of shadow that then curves over and then Got. again I'm using the tip now quickly indicating the direction of the way that the eyebrows grow because you've got some highlights on the top so we need to allow that light to stay rather than just doing the full black all the way up You can see already that's really jumping off the page and this is the thing usually if you would just gone straight in with the dark you wouldn't have this tone around helping you so fill that in all the way up to the top of the eyebrow then got the dark got that diagonal going up there so that's very dark and then dark part going up curving just slightly I mean it's just darken that tone down a little bit now really darkening the pupil down the shadow caused by the upper eyelid now I really like the effect of really pressing on with a graphite pencil just gives you that really dark shine and I love the sheen that you get and the effect now dark coming off the bottom of his iris the, the pencil so soft it's lovely you can just build the tone up and you're just leaving that little highlight and all of a sudden you've got Tony Stark looking out at you with his left eye so now I'm just coming up filling in triangle part by his nose that comes down again just soft by the edge 
as it blends up going to that kind of darker point. And then we've got that dark shadow above the upper eyelid. That's looking great. So then we come down where the tear duct is, we've got a little point of shadow. And we've got this curve of the nose where it comes down. And it's not jet black dark, but it's slightly darker. But again, I'm now using the flat soft point of the end of the pencil, not the actual sharp tip. If I turn it over, it's gonna have a sharp edge. But it means I can have this softer edge coming all the way down his nose. Just indicating where the nostril is. Then that V at the top where the curve of the nose is. We've got, the, again, the soft edge underneath coming to the very underneath part of the nose. And then that blends. I'm just indicating, like I say, some shadow and shade and then it's kind of darker in the center but we can just use the flat now and fill in that tone quite a lot and it's already leaping off the page for us that's really good. Just sharpen the pencil. Now I'm doing I'm going straight in with the 4B on the pupil and the iris as I did with the 2B on this side just to show you the difference because I can feel it already getting softer and disappearing. We have the shape of that lower eyelid going underneath, little crease that goes up, and then it starts to go over, and the dark comes down, come over. It's a bit, bit of a little bit of a jaunty angle there. It's not a smooth curve. And then the one above gets close, kind of at the top. I can just feel how soft this is. It's just, the pencil's just disappearing. It's becoming quite blunt. So now twisting it so it's got the sharp point to get that edge. And already we did all of that work around here with the 2B pencil. And it, it allowed me, again, you can use a 4B, but I just know that that is now softer and flatter. So now I've got to really twist it to create this sharp highlight, dark rim around that highlight. So now I'm increasing the dark. Coming down on the iris again, we've got the little dark bits at the bottom. Shadow there, leaving a little kind of highlight bit. Just softening the edge around that line. Here it needs to be darker. Coming down. And the 
eyebrow above, kind of darker in the centre. And then go softer towards the edge. So now I'm going to come back with 2B pencil. I don't even have to sharpen this. Do the edge of the tear duct. Curve that around. There's a little highlight right in the corner. We just need to darken that down. Right next to the iris. And we've got that highlight on the skin fold. Coming across. And this is where you're using the different grades. Like I say, we're using the 2B. You can control the tone a lot more. So now we've got the shape of the lower eyelid. This curves around, comes up. And then we can just indicate some of the eyelashes on that lower lid. And coming back up, putting that detailed crease line in. It's just above the eyelid. On that, that fold of eyelid, there's a little tiny crease. Again, just check the image. Check your reference and just, again, this is, it's just looking. You, you develop the skills over time. It just takes time to build up. So now I'm coming in to do the eyebrow. You can see from this corner point, the eyebrow starts right here. Again, I'm using the tip of the 2B pencil. It's not that blunt yet. I can just keep twisting it. And I can indicate that I'm drawing in the direction that the hairs grow. Now, underneath, we've got some hairs in that, that are creating that slightly lighter tone underneath. And we've got that darker band of shadow inside the actual eyebrow itself and coming off into that light. So now the edge of the eyelid up the socket up to the top we've got a darker shadow. Just a little line right next to that highlight. I'm doing cross hatching over the top of that tone that we put down and it just really helps. And again the real beauty of this dark you can see now Tony is really staring out at us. And it just looks great. The dark shadow really helps the image to leap off the page. So now we've got the lower eyelid shadow underneath that comes around to this sharp highlight. That secondary bag kind of just growing and developing the lines and the detail around the eye. Again, just coming back in on the right eye, putting a little bit of shadow right in by the tear duct and underneath the upper eyelid just next to the iris. Again, on the right eye, it's darker in the corner. We've got shadow underneath the upper eyelid and then we just bring the tone, curve it round. Now, using the sharp tip, indicating some of his eyelashes, And that's really, 
really lovely. That's really starting to look good and pull together. So again, now I'm going to do his moustache. I'm drawing the whiskers of his moustache just nice and quickly twisting the pencil in the direction that they grow and that just gives you more reality so we've got shadow at the bottom darker shadow here dark shadow on the center part of the kind of triangle of it And then that comes all the way down and then coming out to the left hand side we've got the same so we bring in the moustache twisting the pencil so we keep the sharp point but drawing the lines in the way that they would grow and it just it's that simple it really makes it look more realistic and the cross hatching just allows little highlights to show through now I did have a blending stump ah, here it says as he's still dirty from the previous drawing of spider-man I'm just going over the moustache just to fill the tone in nice and quick and that's all it takes so now we want to do the mouth I'm just going to come back in with the 4b pencil because we've got the center line is going to be quite dark again from the corner goes up a little and you can see it then comes across and around the center goes up to about there then we get another little curve going to the corner that's nice and dark and soft now I'm just softening the edge using the 4b pencil and coming back in with the 2b we can build the shadow up so this comes right the way over And the highlight kind of starts about here we've got this darker tone on the left hand side we've got this triangle of dark that comes across and the lip goes up comes over and we've got the dark again in the right hand corner now now we've got some highlights where I'm drawing lines now like the creases that you've got in your lips and that's exactly the same as you do with the hair and bristles of the moustache makes it look the same so drawing some of the bristles off the bottom lip a little bit of shadow off the bristles underneath his moustache Now, here you can see we've got these fantastic crease lines coming off his lower lip. So we draw them in the direction the way it curves on his actual lip. Now, fill the tone in. coming out to the side and then I'm now using the tip of the pencil the 2b pencil pressing on really hard to indicate the goatee hairs underneath his chin now not pressing on so hard but again just drawing lots of little lines quickly 
to indicate that goatee and it comes down again right the way to his chin at the bottom got that dark goes up there it's going to go dark going up the side but we've got those little highlights at the bottom so again just twisting the pencil hairs coming off the side of his cheek Now we're just filling in very quickly the hairs on the bottom of his chin. bottom of the goatee and then we've got this darker shadow tone here coming off the bottom of the lip looking really lovely. Like I say we've got the eyes, nose and mouth and the bottom of his chin in there. So again we can just build up the more detail as we keep going along and you can see the form and shape of Tony taking place but because we did the foundation work that's what makes it look really good. Oh nearly. Oh back in with the 4B pencil now and we're going to block in a lot of this shadow and shade areas. So I'm using the flat side of the pencil, using the paper on the page to rest my hand and I'm pivoting just backwards and forwards very quickly. Again we've got this top of that highlight there and we want the shadow to come right to that top part. We're coming into the hair, we come up and you can see here we've got a little highlight within the shadow so and that's caused by the hair so again I'm leaving just that little bit there that kind of indicates it for us and then I want to come down the side of his forehead and this is where it comes up from the eye we're just letting the pencil do the work and you can kind of see that there's like a diagonal line of dark down there and we can just build up on this later but just letting the pencil on the paper do the work for us and it you get that kind of mottled tone that the skin produces so now we come down off the eye Got that lovely corner piece there, little curved shape there before it comes down the cheek. Then the side of the eye, that line coming down off the bag, not pressing on too hard there. But then we've got the cheekbone, the shadow on the cheekbone. And we've got the shadow line coming up, it's dark, and then we've got a kind of little
parallelogram of shadow here. And then we've got the darker line coming over to join that by the side of the highlight. And then we've got a little bit of darker tone just starting to come up, but we'll build that up when we've got the dark in. We're just going to try and get in the dark quickly now, just to like we did with the first layer of tone. We're now building up the second layer, the darker layer, so that when we do the full details, it'll all snap together and look rather nice. So again, we've got this highlight coming down. Highlight within the kind of cheek shadow area and this is looking pretty good I'm really enjoying this I hope you are too so now just fill in a little bit more again you can see how just fast I'm doing this dark tone on the side of the cheek that's a bit darker a bit softer so we can build that up now I'm gonna be careful And I'm using the very tip of the pencil, but flat. And we can get some nice dark tone using the 4B. I do find the 4B very versatile. I thought I might have been using an 8B, but I think we might actually get away with just using the 4B. So now I'm following the line that we drew next to the ear to give us that crisp outline. Now, we come down and we just need to fill in all of the ear right the way to the bottom. And this is where using the softer pencil you can get that detail in because you're filling in shapes if you think of shapes rather than just actual line detail it just helps you to build it up so there's that highlight on the inside of the ear And we've got the dark and we've got this fuzzy little bit of hair behind his ear coming into this dark we've got this little V shape again just soft where it touches the skin then we can fill in the dark. Soft where it touches the skin and then we can just really fill in the dark as it comes down. And this is really black. But again I've now got quite a blunt tip. And that 
comes down, round and underneath. Where the chin is and we can bring that dark over. You see already we, we need to increase the dark on the side of his cheek. But that's really helping us. Now we've come round to the front. And this is where we can use the soft of the 4B pencil. We've got enough of a sharp point because of the flat to draw the edge of the collar. The dark underneath the chin and that little V part and then coming right underneath the chin. But then we can build that tone up going across. The tone on Tony. So again we've now got the dark at the bottom. This is all going to kind of come together relatively quickly. I'm just indicating where some of our construction lines need to be for the shapes. But already it's, it's kind of distinguished gentleman with a turtle neck collar. A metal turtle neck collar but still a distinguished gentleman. So Now I'm hovering because I'm just filling in, looking carefully, you can see where the highlights are, this big tonal shape in his hair coming up to the top. You can see coming straight up from this dark patch here, we've got a very dark crescent. And the darker patch is right inside. And we come down and just fill in that shadow a little bit. So I've just sharpened the pencil and you, your softer pencils will disappear quickly. So make sure you've got a few if you're doing a lot of dark. Now we're going over the ear. Got this dark. I'm using the tip of the pencil, just twisting it quickly just to keep it sharp. This is the 4B. And we've got the hair coming off the back side of his head. And just twisting using the tips, keeping it nice and sharp. And that'll give us a detail going into that hair that we can build up in a bit. Now using the flat side, back to the tip. And we have this shadow see how it comes across from this shadow point here. I'm using this flat side because it's on the skin it's not like the hair. And I'm just kind of wiggling it I'm just picking it up and down and that's how we can get that kind of mottled effect quite quickly. Again if you want to do hyper real you'd spend hours on this but I'm just trying to get you to see how easy it is to get an impression very quickly. And now we've got that really nice highlight starting to be delineated because of the dark either side of it. So now we come up to Tony's hair. 
So I'm using the flat of the pencil, 4B still. And it kind of curves and then comes across. And we've got lovely shape and tone coming from the dark in the shape of the hair that's coming out. So I'm using the tip of the pencil again in just the direction that the hair is brushed. We've got real dark patches but just need to be careful so we've got them in the right places. So we've got this kind of V at the top where it's swept up. It's darker at the bottom. And again, you can ima see, imagine brushing the hair with a brush or a comb, and that's what you're doing with the pencil. And that's how you're able to create the image and impression of real hair. Again, if you want this to look absolutely accurate, you've got to spend a long amount of time. So we've got highlights here. shadow down the side of the hair just the dark now I'm using the tip so we've got the hair and I'm just twisting it quickly right next to the forehead so we've got this line that goes up but we've got the hair that just kind of crosses over a little bit Again, now I'm just using the pencil quickly just to indicate how that hair is growing and the direction it's going in. We've got a strong highlight on the edge, so just be careful, don't go all the way, so just let that light shine. And I'm just letting the paper do the work for that. Now, this is just the hair coming up. It's getting really flat and soft now. But that's okay because we've got... Just keep twisting it and you're getting lighter tones going into that highlight. just indicate these quickly we can just build on the tone again this is just getting a kind of good quick mid tone down as well as some of the darks just to give us a good base for how it needs to be developed as we go on. So again, on the front because there's no sharp highlights, and this is the thing with the darker, I'm just pulling the pencil round, but you lose some of the darks. Just smooth that out. Then I'm just coming in quickly with 
potty rubber. And this allows me, in fact, I'm going to use the Tomo eraser, Tombow mono eraser. And this is again just another simple tool. I'm just brushing it in the way it needs to go. And it creates for us the effect that we need. Within those highlights and within the hair. And just coming down on the front of the hair and coming back in with the 4B pencil twisting it where I've got a little bit of a sharp point and we've got the shadow right next to the forehead going up Now I'm coming back in with the 2B pencil just because it's got that slightly sharper point. Now here we've got the hair that's coming right down his cheek. It's coming off and we've got this highlight here so able to just detail that up quickly. You can see how far it comes down kind of come over from the nose but the sharp point means you can add that little bit of tone and crispness right next to the forehead that you need so now we've got the wispy hair using the 2B pencil just to indicate those a bit more off the top of his hair coming down off the back And that's looking really good so far. And we're just building up the tone slowly just to make it look fuller. And we're just building and adding more and more to the drawing as we go. So back in with the 4B pencil. <clears throat> we're going to block in. So I need to just bring that paper over. We're going to block in the shadows and I've got the nice points sharpening it <clears throat> so I can get into that corner and we've got the curve of that shadow going up. And we need to just quickly block in these darker tones down on his body armor now bring the line coming around the collar And we're filling in the shadow, but if we fill in these tones like we did the first kind of layer of tone, we then have all of the dark 
a slightly darker band here. All of the dark in that will allow us to build the tone for the rest of the image. And again, we just keep going till we get it done. So, I hope you're enjoying this because I'm having a blast. This is really, really nice. So, now, coming over the collar, using the flat side of the 4B pencil. We have that dark going up, bit of tone going off to the side. Then we've got this darker tone. And again, you can kind of see that there's lines in that shadow. So I'm following the same way that those lines are going with the pencil. So now just filling in around the top of the collar. And again, because you're going over the black, you can kind of go over it. and not worry about going over the lines. Now, we've got this kind of triangle here. On the shape of the kind of top shoulder part between the shoulder pad and the neck. Now, Got this tone in this triangle. And that fills that shape in there. And we've got this really nice dark patch. See now I've just gone over that highlight. So just come in with the Tomo eraser using the tip of the 4B just to get that highlight back in. Got the dark line down there. Now this rectangle comes up and over a little bit. So now I'm just filling around the edge of these other elements just so that we've got the dark. Now sometimes I have left these darker edge pieces till the very end and just filled them in. But again, <clears throat> I'm just showing you that there is no formula. And by you, know, you, you copying this and enjoying the process, you will develop your skills so that when you're doing your own, you will be able to choose which direction you go when and where on your portrait. Again, it's just something that's built over time. If you're someone who wants to just use a formula and say, I will do this, I'll do the eyes and then the nose, and you know, absolutely brilliant, knock yourself out. It's so, so good. This is the beauty of drawing and art and painting. So you can do what you want and develop your work in the way that you would like to. So there we've got the dark coming right down the side. We've got a real dark line there. Another one there. And then this edge. Again, I'm just pressing on really hard and quick. Filling in that dark tone up the side. And this is the thing, you can see already that 
even though this is looser, because your focus is up on the face, it'll all kind of fall into place. So that's that thick dark stripe going up and we've got dark shadow that kind of bends down a little bit going right next to this highlight. And then that comes right down to the bottom and we've got scratchy dark bit of dark here trying to leave some highlight points again I'm just doing this really quickly because it's just good fun and this way we can build up this tone really quickly and then there's less work on it at the end. Now again I'm doing this because this my hand is will be on the clean side and that's a real bonus when it comes to doing the detail. So when I'm working on the rest of his face it won't be interrupting what I've got down here. So again just the shadow coming up we've got this curves a little bit towards that highlight just using the tip where it's sharper <clears throat> so that's looking pretty good just like I say just nice tones I'm just squiggling the pencil about technical term squiggling and just darkening that tone right down the bottom now sharpening the pencil I've got the highlight coming over here slightly darker tone just building that tone going over again we can darken it down a little bit it's lighter up at the top as well just because of the curve of the metal and the same down at the bottom Now if you can hear the birds singing outside, you know, I've got mid-tone on the side here with darker bits right at the top. It's because I have to have my studio window open just because it's so hot. Uh, now this is March and got the dark there right in the corner. Fill that in. I might actually take the tape off and fill that in a bit more a bit later and it's the hottest day I think it's the hottest or yesterday as well was the hottest March day since 1968 in the UK in England so that's pretty hot I think it kind of hit 24 degrees Celsius which is pretty warm anyway it's not Sahara Desert hot or places in India hot or Texas hot or anything like that but it's still pretty warm so I've got the window open so you might hear birds tweeting, drills going, hammers going, all kinds of stuff. I have no idea. But it's nice. But I did actually have a comment earlier uh, where they said they actually liked hearing the birds. It just sounded so lovely and natural, which is nice. So again, you can see I'm just filling tone in here now across this front metal chest plate. And I'm using the flat side of the pencil and just and you can see it's creating that burnished dark battered effect that we're after we're coming up F 
filling that in nice and quickly again this is this is just great so here we have in more kind of battered pieces come up to this highlight got the red tone I got some like strong highlights but I'm just literally just scribbling and scratching the pencil and it just makes it work really nicely so again here we've got some slightly darker lines where the chest plates meet and that's looking pretty good so now we've got this scar across the central piece a bit of tone in the top part of that circular part again the same in the shadow on the side of there and that's what you can do just with simple indications of tone and marks and you can see we've got a really good vibrant image starting to appear so this is looking really really good so i hope you're enjoying this so far but i'm going to sharpen the pencil again and we need to start building up tone now this is very very dark now I did do this on Taylor Swift <laughs> now we could leave this till the very end but it will help so what I'm gonna do is I've got a large flat well it will get flatter as I start using it on the 4b and I'm likely going to fill in the background so again we've got this tone in the background that is the sky in the battle scene now again you can put the contrails in and all the shrapnel but I'm just gonna go for tone I think and the reason is, is this tone will, like, do I put the contrails in? This tone will make the highlights stand out. So I don't think I'm going to do the contrails. I'm just going to fill it in. You can see already that we, oh, 2B pencil trying to escape. We just... building the tone up softly nice and light like I do with the 2B pencil but I'm using the 4B pencil because it's softer to move the paper and then I will have to use the paper all the time but it's lighter and it's not all of this dark on the detail and so if I build this tone up using this soft pencil it will then allow the highlights to stand out in a much sharper way so we're coming down the side of the face that's looking really lovely now again you could put the contrails in and all that kind of stuff but that just that's a lot of time but we've got the time so we might do again 
I'll show you, like I say, I'm building that tone up a little bit. And that'll allow the contrail to show. Increasing the tone there. Again, the pencil's getting flatter, so I'm getting softer tone coming down. We want darker around the top of the head. And then we graduate it out so it's darker and then becomes lighter as it comes down. So that fills the paper up quite nicely. And already you can see that's now framing Tony's head really nicely. So I'm now going to come in with the putty rubber and just I'm dabbing and pulling off kind of where those contrails are coming down. And you can see already that we've got that nice kind of shape. Of the smoke in the sky. Now again, I'm not pulling a cleaner piece up for this top corner. That's looking pretty good. So we'll get a clean part, you can see how dirty that is, get a clean part of, or a cleaner part of the kitchen towel. And I'm doing circular motions, little circular motions. Just completely softening off. Just being careful next to the face. You can see already now we've got that part of that contrail coming down. Again, just circular motions inside the pencil line up to the edge. And that just totally smooths it off. And that goes up to that contrail. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Up to the top, coming across. Again, don't be afraid to go over the hairline. So, you go over the hairline a little bit. You see I'm just pulling the tone down. The paper's getting dirtier. And again, you can really work on that a lot, but that just gives the idea of the background that we want. Just nice and quickly and simply. And that then it's a really nice smooth background that's just really good I hope you're enjoying this this is fantastic so now you come back in with an eraser I'm using my putty one and I'm just quickly bringing those accents the highlights back on the edge and you could go even darker 
that, that tone at the top could be even darker but that's enough to make his head stand out I've got the highlight on the ear on the top of his suit now did come over so I'm using the blending stump just to fill that in up to the top of the suit on the sides the side of his cheek And this is how good you can create effects using an eraser. And we've got the highlight down the side hair right the way down the side and then even in these little bits and then on the top of his armor in the center part that's looking pretty groovy So now we're going to come in with the 2B pencil and again kind of pun intended in a way but at the moment his face is looking a little stark because we've not got the other tones so we need to just build up like the way we've got other tone down here I'm going to use the 2B pencil and we're going to start over on this cheek Again, I'm just using the tip nicely and quickly, just using cross hatching. And it just gives us that softer tone that we need, just building up and adding. Remember, it's always easier to add tone than to take it away. So we're coming down the shadow on the side of the nose. Again, we've got a highlight here, right next to this crease line from his mouth up to the nose. So I'm just increasing that detail line of the crease line. And we can just bring the tone over. And fill the cheek in little by little now got a little bit of a shadow line coming up and then we've got more of a shadow coming across the cheek coming to this corner And then the lines coming from the lower bag under his eye. And we can just build that tone up nice and quickly. Again, just building it up nice and simply just increasing it around the dark on the top of that cheek building that tone up and you can see how we start to get more three-dimensionality in the face straight away because it's working against the highlight and the shadows here 
and up here. And that's what we want. A bit more shadow underneath the bag on that eye. And we come up. Then over the top lip. We bring that tone all the way over. There's a bit of a highlight here. So we can just leave that showing. But then we've got the shadow. comes right onto that corner we can bring that shadow a little bit closer and then in between the nose and then it's lighter just a little bit dark here but it becomes lighter as we come over because obviously there's more light on this side now the actual nose itself <clears throat> just come in with the tip of the 4b pencil that's sharpened as well And we've got the dark of the right nostril. And we've got the warmer tone underneath. Now, we've got a lot of dark to do on the actual nose, the shadow. But we want to get all of these mid-tones in. So now we're coming up the side of the nose. Just indicating the edge of the nose, the line a little bit, using the soft, flatter part of the pencil. We've got this little shadow in this little crease in the bottom of his nose. It's kind of like a butterfly shape. You see there, there's a little butterfly shape and the strongest highlight is here. So now I'm going to come from up the forehead, bringing the soft, darker tone out from the shadow over onto his nose. Get down the right side of the nose and then this comes across over to that top part. And then the crease goes up. And then in the corner of that eye. Again, building up the tone slowly. Again, we've got that little butterfly shape. Leaving this little highlight right on the top on the front. He's got lots of kind of freckly dirty bits on his nose. We can deal with them soon. So now I'm going to use the full flat side of the pencil. You can see we've got a line coming up like a V from this crease right the way up his forehead. That comes up and then comes across and we've got a little bit of a lighter bit there. But we can just increase the tone coming down to the top of the eyelid, eyelid, eyebrow. And bring that V down. You can see we're just giving, it, it becomes less stark, more tony and less stark. 
because you're building the towns up and there's becoming less white area and it's just starting to look better and better so we come down on this side shadow right by the hair then you've got a dirty shadow coming to about there on the over his right eyebrow leaving that little light patch and just mixing the tone in up the forehead again I've got my left hand resting slightly on the paper but I'm not pivoting from the wrist I'm pivoting from my shoulder so now you can see we've got the creases in Tony's forehead that kind of come across so I'm just indicating those first two and there's another one just above and we can just build up the tone little by little there's a bit of tone in between the centre there another little kind of crease tone coming up and again just working across the forehead just looking and you can see here now there's a square of tone a little bit lighter bringing down and we've got the stronger highlights here again I need to bring a little bit of tone down there and then tone below that crease goes over it's kind of like a W there of tone again I'm using a lot of cross hatching here we can see it's just building up and looking more and more realistic and this is what you do you just work around the image building up slowly again I'm going to come down we've got the shadow caused by this crease line coming down to his moustache up to the nose I'm using the very tip I'm using a sharp point it feels very scratchy but it soon becomes soft and then we can put that darker shadow in there and then we've got coming down the side of the cheek this tone going up to the highlight by his right eye and then that comes around underneath this lower eyelid bag area of his eye and we can bring that up And now that's looking really lovely. So now off the side of his nose, we need a little bit more tone there. And then coming down to join that darker line and then filling this triangle in. This is looking really lovely. I hope you're having fun because this is a blast. Again, bringing the tone down. The side of his chin coming below the moustache. Filling that in gently. 
a little bit lighter there. And again, this is just cross hatching. I've not done any smoothing and we've got darker to add. With some more, but this is just how you work around an image, building the tone up. So again, we can see we've got the dark shadow comes up from about this part above his eye. We need to bring that down. And we're just getting the different shades and tones on the planes of his forehead. Getting the different kind of creases of his furrowed brow. But this is what you can do even just with simple cross hatching. You can build up an image really well and develop it even just with cross hatching. You don't have to smooth everything out. Now again, I will use the blending stump. I think I will anyway, because it will just help. But that's looking rather lovely. And we've got this light coming up the side. Coming up the cheek, it's a bit darker. Then we want much darker inside the lower right eyelid. Just working across the right eyelid. That's really starting to come together. That definitely looks like our Tony. Bit of shade in that corner and that's coming down there. So now I'm going to come in with the blending stump and we're going to do some tonal work on Tony. So again, this is just like cross hatching, but it's just kind of smoothing out the tones. I'm squinting and I can see the darker tones that I want. So I've got this kind of V coming up here and then we've got the lines coming across his forehead. And then coming up his forehead. Coming off the nose. We've got this darker shadow coming half off the dark like a mid-tone shadow coming off the dark shadow. And so we can build up these tones quickly and carefully, just as if, now you could do this just all with the pencil, but I really like using a blending stump. So we've got coming over those crease lines, the top of his head. And already you can see that's really looking lovely. And this is how you can just build up the tones nice and quickly. 
this is a brilliant tool for portraits and just underneath the eye bag under the left eye where we've got those creases coming down the further one that's down coming round past that highlight I get them very lightly and gently bringing this tone down the cheek then from the moustache going up And we've got crossing over that there just a little bit then the cheek going up coming off the nose you see that just looks really lovely coming down in the light between the forehead creases so again now from the side of the nose and we're going to have to really darken this down we can come down soften that edge the shadow cast by the nose We're taking that tone up and again the dark from the corner of his left eye coming down and around and then coming across and under Got that sharper highlight there So now we've got a darker highlight, darker shadow coming off the cheek right next to this highlight that then goes off up into the corner. And this is how simple it is. You just, you cross hatching but with a blending tool and it makes it look super realistic. So again, softening that tone down on his cheek a little bit then over the right side of his nose and then you've actually got on the nose I'm just going to clean it off because it's picked up a lot of pencil just give it a wipe on the kitchen towel I've got this little W shape And then actually coming up the nose again just filling in the tone a little bit in the center and then just leaving that little highlight on the end now we want to bring the tone on the curve around the edge you see that's just looking really lovely and just filling in the tone down the side of his left lower lip on his chin just trying to leave that highlight a little bit again just filling in the ear And this is how good and simple it is, even just using a blending stump. Now again, this is picking up loads of pencil. So just give it a quick clean on some kitchen paper or tissue. We do the upper lip and the lower lip. We can just put some 
tone on. And the shadow coming down. I'm just dabbing just to get some of these tones into the highlight as the skin is breaking up just the edge of the highlight. So I'm just dabbing like pointer list. And that's looking absolutely splendid. Tone on his chin. I'm coming around the lip. So again now we're just on to his army. Just nice and quick. You can see how it just blends the tone for us. It gives us that kind of burnished effect. Again, I'm just twizzling the blending stump. And right up to the edge. And you get that nice, like I say, I'm just swirling it around. And you're getting that nice burnished effect on the metal right up to the edge got that kind of little crisp highlight filling the tone in on the shadow a little bit there Oop. and that's another nice little stage done just using the blending stump now we're going to work on the hair after this and final details darker shadows see how we get right so back in with the 2b pencil and now we're going to really score in a lot of the hair detail quickly. Again, this is just adding some nice details to the drawing. Got that highlight right on the edge. Coming right down. Again, you can spend as much or as I mean you could leave it literally like that. That's that's a good drawing. But I'm just showing you more techniques to improve your skills and develop your drawing abilities. So We've got all these little hairlines at the top, where the highlight is. So I'm just adding some little lines, just to give some definition. So we can tell we've got the V here and we've got that hair that goes down there we've got the hair coming out from that shadow part again this is going to have to go darker but again a 2B you can really press on and get some dark you can see that's really increasing the intensity but we're going to carry on 
working over the top of the hair. Just keep spinning the pencil. And I'm just indicating where the hair is and it just crisps up the highlight all over the top. So we can see there there's some lines going through from here so here we've got a V where the highlight comes over it's kind of like a parting and the hair just dances about now again there's some white highlights you could use paint or Uh, like a Tipex corrector pen or a Pentel corrector pen, you know, the correcting fluid. But now, just keep spinning the pen so you've got a sharper point. Again, I'm drawing these in the way that you would brush the hair and it just gives some nicer definition so here we can see we've got some nice dark hair lines coming over through that highlight again the same as it comes over to this part here As a look, you can just see we've got darker highlights coming down. And then the hair going up. looking really lovely so again now on this side just quickly again you can you can tell I'm really just whacking the paper twisting the pencil to get that sharp dark hairline effect and then I'm going to sharpen the pencil again right in the corner by the head got the hair darker as that comes down we just need to bring out these hairs that are kind of wispy on the side just adding that little detail again just the hair as it crosses over itself just going round the side of his head again just squinting my eyes and I can see a darker shadow inside there again this is just with the 2B pencil this <sighs> going up the top of the head Now, coming in with the 4B pencil, 
That was a sharpened tip and it's just snapped. But this is just because it's a softer pencil. I'm trying to do the same thing that I did with the 2B. So here we have the tones close to the forehead. It's darker right at the bottom. And then we've got the dark going off to the side. And then we've got this dark here right on the corner feeding into the hair. And that's looking really lovely. So now using the 4B we're just going to build up the darks where we need to just nice and quickly so you can see I'm just my hand is kind of hovering resting my arm on my top of my left hand right hand uh, and then it's allowing me to use the soft smooth part of the 4B pencil to bring the dark down the side of his head in little patches. So this is coming up now over his eye. Again I'm working rather quickly and we've got these two kind of scratches on his forehead. They come up and we've got the kind of dirty patches coming over. I'm just tapping to get the dirty patches on the right side of his forehead. Soft of the pencil but a kind of sharper point that will put the crease lines back in. And that's that dirt looking around that eye. So now the dark over the right eye in the corner of the right eye socket. shadow working from that corner and just a little bit of dark on the lower eyelid that corner just increasing and just a little bit of cross hatching we got the crease line going right up to the tear duct again on the side of the face we've got these dirty marks and I'm just tapping the pencil crease in the corner it's got a dark line Again, just some dirty marks. If you think of them like freckles, that's just how you can build up that detail. Creasing that center furrow. Again, going up into those dirty marks. On the upper part of his forehead. Uh, 
Again, we just need to bring the dark out a little bit more as we come down there. Now, we've got a really, see it comes underneath the eye, V-shaped dark part there and that goes over got a kind of triangle of dark and then a little pointer comes down again I'm softening it at the edge as it just comes out but then going up to around the head over the top of the ear just stippling a little bit nice and quickly again I'm doing this really quick it just gives an effect but you can see how dramatic it's making that light appear so now we've got to increase the dark a little bit. Coming down the left side of the cheek. Got a real dark tone. Then that comes up the dark does in that so we've got this like kind of diamond shape and we're just building that dark up and you can see how the face is now really starting to look fully three-dimensional And this is, again, up the side of the face. I'm just stippling really quickly. And this is kind of pointillist. It just gives us the tone that we want. I'm coming right over now. I'm increasing the dark in the ear. And then coming around the edge of the ear, right the way down, got that dark. And so just filling all of that tone in. And that's looking really lovely. We just increasing the dark. I say this point list just adds that little bit of texture. All the way down. Again, some slightly darker lines up the side of the cheek. As we come down. really lovely so now we work 
looking across the shadow down his cheek down the jawline right the way to the bottom and his neck little kind of couple of diagonal lines that's the creases on his neck as it's kind of licking up and you're just working around very quickly now again you could be using the 8b which would be super soft so now I'm working into the beard really would be absolutely super soft but the 4b does well you can tell it's done really well on this I'm very very pleased with the effect again if you've only got a 2b then you just do the dark as dark as you can just enjoy the process of drawing so that's the dark tone we need a little bit of dark below the lower lip on the left hand side and now we're going to come up to the nose we've got to really increase the shadow so we've got this curve here and then the nose comes down and we've got another curve right at the end and so we can soften that edge off coming up the nose then we've got the curve that comes up that part little triangle of shadow crease at the top and we want the curve of the nose at the back so we've got that little crescent shape highlight but it's really dark and subdued crease of the top of the nose coming up from the front to the back and we've got these dark patches it's not all one solid mass of black if you kind of squint you can see just shapes inside so don't do it all as a mass of one dark colour. You've got the shadow underneath the nose that comes off to the side. I'm just using the flattened tip now to, I think a helicopter is going over, to get the nice, yep that's a helicopter bring that soft tone up the side of his face we can darken down that triangle coming over from the nose so we've got to bring the shadow down a bit further dark right on that front bit just soften it again right on the edge take that vertical part up the nose and we can darken the shadow So that comes around the upper lip again just increasing K 
carefully just add in a little bit of tone and that's looking really really lovely but again just increasing the dark in that nose area now has really lifted the picture sharpen the 4b pencil and we're now doing the same in the lips just darkening and we've got the crease lines just using the soft to build up dark tone around the top and then the same on the right hand side of the lip Now, using the sharp point, but I'm not pressing on too hard because I don't want to shatter the pencil. We're increasing the dark. Some pigeon or something has just landed on my window. I don't know if you had the flapping wings. Yeah, that's a pigeon. So, we're increasing just the shadows in his moustache just so as tonally they rest together now again at the top just nice little hairs past the construction lines and that gives us that kind of nice moustachey look corner of the mouth and the moustache nice and dark and then the goatee underneath building up that dark and the goatee right at the bottom just some dots little hairs and I'm twisting the pencil quickly so I've just got the sharp points as I keep jabbing and then in this little highlighted bit I'm just doing some quick cross hatching and jabs and points a bit like up here And that gives us that slightly mottled effect and these are just nice final details and ha effects that we're putting in shadow around the left eye crease I got shadow on the inside a little bit darker That's looking really, really lovely. So now, just really increase the dark just on the shadow that's cast by his head down onto the metal of his upper shoulder. Oh. 
darks down here. I'm using the flat of the pencil now, really just pressing on as hard as I dare really, because I know that the pencil could shatter, because it's such a soft pencil. But this is how you get the effects that you want and are after. You see that just gives us so much more depth. And again, the same. On the top of the front. Of his army. And this is how you just, again, you're just working across the image, building it up. Now we could have finished a long time ago, but this, it's just too good an opportunity to waste. So, so you make it and develop your drawing skills is to just keep working and figuring things out. Now, I'm going to come in with the putty rubber, highlights on the lower lip, on the upper lip, dabbing some parts in between that chin, and again just stippling gives us that kind of effect that we're after. Increasing the highlight on the side of the nose, on the front. Now I'm just pulling out the highlights again on the side of the head. That just crisps them up and you can see that just really lifts up. the image for us. Now, again, on this side, I'm just stippling inside that shadow and up that cheek and some nice quick line highlights in the hair. around the edge where we did all of those little lines. And so over the top of the hair, coming down to this side. Now again, I'm going to come in, I've really pulled the putty rubber to a fine point. Just pulled out the highlights in the eye. Now I'm just pulling out some highlights around the actual eyelids and then the eyeball just dabbing. Just gives it a little bit more light lower bag underneath and underneath the tear duct got a little horizontal line and down here you've got a highlight on the crease again just softened it with my finger and then up the cheek just stippling a little bit coming down That gives us a nice effect over the top of the eyebrow, coming over on 
on the forehead. Again, I'm just stippling now. And that gives us that really nice set of highlights up his forehead. Then over the top of the eyebrow. And coming in for the tear duct on the right eye. And I just need to pull it to a point so as it's nice and clean. Highlight there inside the nose. Right in the tear duct. Then we've got coming over the upper part of the lower eyelid and into the eyeball. Just dabbing inside the upper eyelid. Just some reflected highlights. You can see that's just really pulled the drawing together. Again, just dappled highlights around the forehead, coming down and under the lower eyelid, the top of the cheek. And then coming up to that sharp highlight there. And in between the top of the nose, a little bit in the moustache. Then, actually up the centre of the nose, I'm just dappling carefully. And on the end on the right. And this is how you finish your drawing. You just keep looking and working till you actually content. I like coming off that nose up the side. Now I'm coming back in with the dirty blending stump. Again, just cross hatching. And you can soften those highlights down that are just tonally on the face, just need a little bit of subduing. And there you can see his eyes are really working well for us and staring out now. Again, just nice and simple, a little bit of blending. Now, we've got just all of this shrapnel flying around. So I'm using the flat of the pencil, but it's nice and blurred anyway. And this is adding just ex I wasn't planning on doing this, but it's just worthwhile just to finish the image. And you can kind of look where it's all is. You can put them exactly where they are. But this is finishing off the image for us. Now just being careful and quick just some bits flying around and that is looking something like Again, I've not done them as dark as the shadows 
on the front because that way they'll stay subdued and in the background. So again just lots of simple shrapnel bits pinging all around. Uh, you just come in with the blending stump and you can soften the edges. I mean you can do all of them, you can do a few and that gives you that kind of motion blur effect a little bit more. And you can just work systematically around clockwork, like I say I've started down this side, working way around the image and that is definitely looking something like again I'm just really bringing the shadow up to the armor, just using the blending stump, bringing that up to his cheek. And that is Iron Man. I hope you've had fun. I've had an absolute blast. That's brilliant. I'm really pleased with that. I hope you've had a great time. Do like and subscribe and enjoy all the drawing lessons, this one and future ones and the ones I've done in the past. Anyway, I hope you have a great time with your drawing. Enjoy Iron Man. Take care. Ta-da.